the one today when we have the, the the national anthem, we'll stand up. We won't kneel. We'll do what real Americans do. We'll honor the flag. We'll honor our nas national anthem because we're proud to be Americans. As I said before, the special time is when, when we honor the veterans. We appreciate the service of all of you, all of you that served. We, we appreciate the families that supported us while we were serving. So at this time, I'm going to ask Gary Harris to have the national anthem, and then Sammy Newton will have our opening prayer. If I have, everybody will stand, please. Our Heavenly Father, as we gather today to honor all the veterans that are here today and to the soldiers that are listed on the monuments behind us that paid the ultimate price, and for the ones that are serving overseas now that are in harm's way, and the ones that are in foreign countries that are serving, that maybe next year they will be able to be home for, for this Veterans Day. Yes, this in thy name. Amen. Thank you, Sammy. You may be seated. Every year when we have these observances of various kinds, whether it's be Veterans Day or Memorial Day or, or anything else, the City of Valley always supports us in these efforts. So at this time, Mayor Leonard Riley will come forward and say a few words, and we thank him for all his support. Today, as mayor of the city of Valley, I am honored to welcome you to Valley's Veterans Memorial Park to observe Veterans Day. Americans have gathered in ceremonies each November 11th since 1954 to thank and to honor all those who served the country in war or peace. Veterans Day is about honor. It's all about serving your country so everyone can be free. It's about laying your life on the line to protect liberty. Veterans Day is about courage. It's about respecting the right of each one to live without fear. It's also our, about our heroes, the ones who stand up each day to defend the hope of us all. These brave men and women deserve our gratitude every day for keeping America a country where life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness has continued to be a way of life for 200 years. It is only right that as Americans we take time to let our veterans know how much we deeply appreciate the sacrifices they have made in their lives to keep our country free and keep us safe. To all veterans here today, the City of Valley, Alabama, sincerely thanks you for your service and your sacrifice. 
We share the pride you feel in being able to say you have served in the greatest military in the world. May God bless all the members of our armed services, whether on active duty or retired. May God bless America. And again, I thank all of you for coming. We're always here to support you. And if you need us, always let us know. And this park is starting to mature. You remember about five years ago when we we pulled up all the shrubbery and it looked it didn't look like it was going really mature for a couple of years, but now it's really starting to come mature and the park's starting to look nice. And we just we're just glad to be able to keep it up and make it look nice for our veterans. Again, thank you, Lanny. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Last night, I got a telephone call from a lady. Her name was Sally Breedlove. I know some of you probably know her. She's 92 years old. She was not able to be here today, but she called me and thanked me for observing, having these observances. She thanked me for, for Post 67 supporting the veterans. Her husband was Arthur Breedlove. He was a World War II Army veteran, served in Europe. He was at the Battle of the Bulge. He was decorated for his service. And I thought he, he died in, in 2002. And as I thought about this lady calling, honoring her husband after 18 years uh, since he died, and I thought that was a, a special, a special thing last night. Uh, most of our World War II veterans are gone now, but we have one here with us today. John Lyons is with us. He's sitting over in the car over there, uh, waving over there. He, he's one of the few World War II veterans that we have left. And we're proud of John. He, he told a story of when he was in Europe, they captured some Germans, and he was part of the detail that was guarding them, well, guarding the prisoners. And I remember they wanted to put their hands in the pockets, and he told them, don't put your hands in your pockets. And they said, why can't we do that? And he said, because I got the gun. So I always remember that about, about John, that he had the gun. But anyway, we're proud of that. And then we have our Korean War veterans. The Korean War was over in 1953. And so... That was 67 years ago. So if, if you were in the Korean War, you're not any longer a young man. And uh, of course the Vietnam veterans are also getting up, you know, in that some age too. But we're proud of every one of you, all of them that, that served. We also are proud of our women's auxiliary I have a lady here today that that are giving out these these poppies which commemorates the this day in every year so we appreciate what they do also and also they put a wreath here on the on the memorial we're a little bit different today from what we've done some times in the past we've had a special speaker here and we got a special speaker here today also but he's a little bit different from what we've had in the past but he's a man has been here every time we have asked him to do anything every time we have asked him to support us in any way for i say anything more about him we thank Gator Kincaid for being here with us today. Also, he comes and supports us and, and films this, and then you can look at it on his station later on if you want to. But the man that I've talked about that's going to speak to us today 
we have promoted him once he was a private, and now then we have promoted him up in post 67 to colonel. But we have, we have asked Wayne Clark to come to speak to us. He's been here at all these things through the years. There's not not been anybody that has supported this effort more than Wayne has. So we appreciate it. So Wayne, you come forward and you just tell us whatever's on your heart. Good morning. Glad to see you here today. Post Commander Lanny Bledsoe has kidded me many times about me being drafted into the American Legion and that I was going to be sent on a tour of duty someplace. I finally found out my de destination is to be here to speak to you good people about Veterans Day, what it means to me and what it should mean to all freedom-loving Americans. All kidding aside, I didn't have to be drafted into this. It's something I wanted to do. There's no greater privilege for one who loves this country than to salute the men and women who have answered the call to defend our country. The place where we are gathered today, to me, is a sacred place. This park is beautifully maintained by the City of Valley, and what makes it so special are these monuments that contain the names of men from our Valley area who made the ultimate sacrifice in World War II, for the Korean War, the Vietnam War, and the still ongoing Iraq-Afghanistan War. We are gathered here today during one of America's truly special hours of every year. It's the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. During this very hour in 1918, an armistice, armistice was signed to end what was then called the war to end all wars. It was a joyous day to be sure, but sadly, the wars didn't stop. The men whose names are on these monuments bear witness to that. Death can come to a soldier at any day, any moment, and any second. Such was the fate of a young man from Chambers County's Doublehead community. Lim Wilson Slaughter was killed on the morning of November 18, 1918, barely hours before the armistice went into effect. Two childhood friends of his, Pierce Lee and Jake Royston, were serving with him when he was killed. Royston was so overcome with emotion at the loss of his friend that when the armistice was announced, he vowed to slug the first German he saw. He did so only to learn with the passing of time that it was the wrong thing to do. The war was over, it was time for everyone to celebrate, and soldiers on both sides had lost many dear friends. Writing for a newspaper like the Valley Times News gives one the opportunity to meet lots of people and to put in print many wonderful stories they tell you. Early on in my career, I got to meet veterans of World War I and write their stories. I can't tell you how great it is when they would tell you afterward that you've done a good job in getting across their story and that they appreciated it. We lost our final World War I soldier from the Valley in the early 1990s. Mr. McGlon was a colorful guy who was inclined to dress up his stories a little bit. He'd like to tell you that World War I wasn't his first military service, that he rode with Teddy Roosevelt to the top of San Juan Hill in 1898. You and him both knew he was pulling your leg, but that's, what's what, what, that's what made it fun. We're now witnessing the passing of our greatest generation. The men and women who came of age in World War II made our country what it is. They are the ones who truly made our country great. Collectively, they did something no politician could ever do. It's true, we do have the greatest economy in the history of the world, but guess what? It didn't happen recently. It took place during World War II years, and guess who really built it? The greatest generation. We're number one in the world, thanks to them. It was such a rewarding experience hearing the stories of the greatest generation guys, some of whom were members of American Legion Post 67. Most of these men who are still living are in their mid to late 90s. We lost some really good ones this year. They're gone, but I'll always treasure sitting down, talking to them, and hearing their stories. 
guys like Bernard Pascal, Walt O'Crutney, Jim Nix, and Yancey Sanders had some great stories to tell of their war years. I miss these guys on a day like today, and I miss my friend Crew Pitts, who we lost a few years ago. Crew was always here in the park on Memorial Day and on Veterans Day, videoing the programs to later be broadcast on local TV. He was a little hard of hearing, but I didn't mind raising my voice a little when I talked to him and told him it was always good to see him. It's also good to see John Lyons here, another good friend of mine. He's 96, and hopefully he'll be 97 next February. In 1945, he was one of 160 men in the 42nd Infantry Division. Now, he's one of two that are still left. The, the greatest generation touched our lives in unforgettable ways. I will always remember my dad and an uncle I never knew as heroes. Because of them, I would almost always wear either a sailor's cap or an army cap when I was growing up. I can remember being very conflicted when Army, Navy, and Navy played in football. The dad side of me wanted Navy to win, and Uncle Grover's side wanted Army to win. I lost my dad in 1990, but I will always remember, I will always be proud of his service in World War II. He was in the U.S. Navy and served in the North Atlantic protecting convoys and, the, and in the Mediterranean landing troops in North Africa. Something I have today that was handed down to me from him is a brass ring he picked up in a shop in Oran in North Africa. I'd like to say it was gold from Casablanca and have a connection to Bogey and Ingrid, but the letters O-R-A-N are on its face. My dad was a radar man on the destroyer. He was the eyes and ears of the ship, putting everyone's lives in his hands. He had a knock for spotting enemy reconnaissance planes before they knew where the Americans were. A number of those planes got shot down without knowing what hit them. Everyone knows me as Wayne, and that's okay, but the name I'm proudest of is my first name, Grover. My mom always told me she named me that to keep her brother's memory alive. Grover Bailey of LaGrange, Georgia was a gifted young man bound for great things in life but he was killed in Germany in the final days of the war. We still have a copy of the LaGrange Daily News that has the story of him being killed in action on the front page. The headline of the paper reported that German leader Adolf Hitler had killed himself. From all I've ever heard, my uncle Grover was a high achiever and a people person. He was a night shift manager at the local Piggly Wiggly at only 18 years of age. I have no doubt his fellow soldiers would pick him out to be their foxhole guy, the man you trust with your life. Grover served under General George H. Patton and drove a tank across the Rhine at Remagen. He helped liberate the concentration camp at Dachau, something I'm very proud of, and fought his way across Germany in that Sherman tank before taking a direct hit from an 88 millimeter shell in late April, 1945. That LaGrange newspaper we have from that time tells me that my, my uncle and many other soldiers like him died as heroes, but that Hitler died a coward. For those of us who are alive today, it is our duty to keep these stories alive. We can do that on days like Veterans Day the country we love just didn't happen. It was built by generations that came before us. We owe it to them on days like today to keep their memory alive and to, and to say thank you for a job well done. The men of the greatest generation are like the men from Shakespeare's famed St. Crispian's Day speech, the ending of which reads, this day is called the Feast of Crispian. He that outlives this day and comes safe home will stand on tiptoe when this day is named and rouse him at the name of Crispian. He that shall live this day and see old age will yearly on vigil and feast his neighbors and say, Tomorrow is St. Crispian. Then he will strip his sleeve and show his scars and say, These wounds I had on St. Crispian's day. Old men forget, but will remember what feats he did that day. This story shall the good man teach his son, 
and crisp and crispy and shall ne'er go by. From this day to the ending of the world, we few, we happy few, we band of brothers. For he today who shed his blood with me shall be my brother. For he ne'er so vile, this day will gentle his condition, and gentlemen now safely abed shall think themselves accursed they were not here, and hold their manhoods cheap while anyone speaks who fought with us on St. Crispin's Day. Thank you very much for letting me speak today. It really means a lot to me. It means a lot to me to show respect to our veterans and to have very many friends as veterans. And I thoroughly enjoy going to the meetings of American Legion 67, and I hope they get started up again very soon. Thank you, Wayne. That was very well done. I appreciate you saying those words, reminding us of things and people and times and whatever. And I, I would like to recognize the, all the Marines that are here. I'm going to take that as a personal privilege, but to say simplify to all the Marines that are here in this in this gathering. Yesterday was the 245th anniversary of the Marine Corps. I served 63 years ago. I was wandering across the campus at Auburn, saw a sign that said, join the Marines, and I thought that sounded like a good idea. So I went up and did. I joined him. A few weeks later, I was in officer candidate school in Quantico, Virginia, and I wondered what in God's name I had done. So the next 12 weeks, and I apologize for the language, the next, next 12 weeks that I spent there was hell, and I was glad to survive it, which I did. And when I had graduated, and during that, that 12 weeks, 37% of the men who showed up there well, that officer candidate school did not make it, and I was proud that I did. And one of the things that they gave me, when I, when I was commissioned as a second lieutenant, they gave me a sword, and that meant that I had accomplished something that I was proud of, and I kept it to remind me of that now. I reported when I was in the infantry battalion, I reported to a colonel who had served at Iwo Jima, one of the more famous battles in World War II. There were 20,000 Japanese on Iwo Jima. 70,000 Marines attacked Iwo Jima, a little island in the Pacific. It, the battle lasted five weeks. There were 7,000 Marines killed. Of the 20,000 Japanese on that island, only 200 survived. The Marines not only had 7,000 Marines killed during that five week period, they had 25,000 wounded. Can you imagine what would be the reaction of our people here in the United States today if in a five week period we lost 7,000 people in war. That was what the greatest generation that, that Wayne was talking about, that was what they did back then. And then many of you served in Korea, where over 50,000 of our young men were, were killed. And then you served in Vietnam, where again, over 50,000. And there's been a terrible price paid for us to be here today. We all should be thankful this country is not perfect, but it's better than anything else there ever has been. And we appreciate that. At this time, I'm gonna ask everyone, if you will, to stand. And we're gonna have a word of prayer, a word of silent prayer for each of us in whatever way you want to. We're gonna pray for our country. And then I'm gonna close it with amen at the end. And Gary Harris is going to play taps for us. But if you will, everyone bow your head at this time.
Our fathers, we stand here in this mist and rain. We pray to you for guidance for our country. We all have concerns about what's going on in this country, and we just ask you to guide us and lead us. We haven't been following you in recent days, and we need to come back to you. Now then, be with us as we leave this place. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we thank you. Thank you for being here. We almost got through before we got wet.